Ovarian cancer is a malignant growth of the ovary, a reproductive organ in the pelvis. However, it is a rather heterogeneous disease depending on the name that fits it. The most typical name is what is called epithelial ovarian cancer, which mainly involves high-grade serous carcinoma. This category also includes others such as clear cell carcinoma, mucinous carcinoma, or low-grade carcinoma. Inside the ovary, there's another part that corresponds to the gonads. They are what we call germinal tumors, even that which can cover all that network that are the sexual cords. It is not a very prevalent disease. We're talking about around 3,600 cases per year in Spain, which is about 9.9 .9 cases per 1,100 inhabitants. To give us an idea regarding it, for example, breast cancer occurs for 32,000 cases per year, so ovarian cancer is a relatively rare disease. Signs and symptoms vary up from woman to woman and might include general abdominal discomfort or pain like gas and digestion, pressure, swelling, bloating, cramps, bloating and or feeling of fullness even after a light meal, nausea, diarrhea, constipation or frequent urination, unexplained weight loss or gain, loss of appetite, abnormal vaginal bleeding, unusual fatigue, back pain, pain during sex, menstrual changes. The symptoms above should be discussed with your healthcare provider if they are new symptoms, last more than a few weeks or occur more than 12 times a month. Recommendations on testing for ovarian cancer include pelvic examination, blood test, biopsy imaging, and genetic testing. During pregnancy, as when taking the birth control pill, the ovary is not active, that is, it does not ovulate and this may be a protective factor, but only during this nine-month period. It is not normal for a patient to be diagnosed with ovarian cancer at an early age. The usual age is between 45 and 75 years. There's another series of risk factors such as pelvic disease or hormone replacement therapy that might be associated with ovarian cancer. In the case of a patient under 40 years old, we would have to think about the chance of finding family mutation of BRCA in this upset. There are families where the grandmother or mother has suffered from breast and or ovarian cancer and that it must be suspected. The basic pillar of ovarian cancer treatment is surgery, which seeks to eliminate all traces of visible disease usually leading to better outcomes. To do this, it is essential that it might be performed by highly experienced gynecologist, oncologist. And the second pillar is chemotherapy, and it involves drugs that we call platinums. In addition to chemotherapy, a high degree of remission of the disease has been achieved with the appearance of new treatments called antiangenesis and PARP inhibitors. Radiation, it's also used, but it's rare. The most obvious after effect of ovarian cancer treatment includes infertility. This type of surgery includes removal of the uterus and ovaries. Young girls, it would also produce an early menopause, which all in this entails in terms of joint pain, half flashes, weight gain, etc. Being highly complex, this type of surgery can sometimes leave small swelling in the abdomen and even with the removal of the lymph nodes in the abdomen, patients often report that their legs are swollen. Regarding chemotherapy, although it's generally very well tolerated, it can leave certain after effects. The most worrisome is peripheral neuropathy, which affects the sensitivity of the nerves on the hands and feet. Generally speaking, when patients complete this treatment, they notice less energy, greater tiredness that can uh, alter their day-to-day -day life, although they recover little by little and it's usually a big problem. The prognosis of a patient with ovarian cancer involves many factors. 
It will initially depend on how and where the operation was carried out and how she responds to treatment. Also, some uh, molecular prognostic factors like BRCA can have taken into account. Mm -hmm.